right. Hey, everyone. I'm Kendra Cook. And I'm Autumn Jackson. And this is Bumper, Bumper to Bumper. Bumper. So, <clears throat> as always, we want to thank everyone that's tuning in, everyone that's leaving us nice comments, uh, either online or on emails or just in person. That's really sweet of you. Thank you so much for tuning in and continuing to support us. And we can't believe we're already here at number five today. So crazy. <laughs> ah, hey, thank you so much. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so for this month's episode, um, we're going to discuss something that is close to both Kendra mm -hmm. and my heart, which is women. We've entitled this episode Women at the Wheel. Um, and typically when people think about the history of the automobile and inventions <clears throat> that have to do with the auto, they think about men. And actually, um, there are many women who have contributed uh, to a lot what has to do with a lot having to do with the automotive industry. Um, mm -hmm. Today, we are going to talk <clears throat> about we're each going to talk about one of those women. Yeah. Uh, talk about some pioneers in the automobile industry today. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I'm going to start out here sure. with uh, a woman by the name of Mary Anderson. Now, she was from Birmingham, Alabama, but it was actually on a trip. Uh, to New York City in 1902 that she got some inspiration from a very um, wintry trolley car ride that she took in New York City. Um, she noticed the driver was having a lot of a lot of problems uh, seeing out the windshield um, because it, it was sleeting. It was, there was like a snowstorm going on and all that stuff was accumulating on the windshield and it was a um, a split windshield and we have some of those in the museum where it kind of opens up in the, the middle so he could open it periodically and sort of wipe everything <laughs> that was accumulating off but let's face it that's really inefficient and annoying <laughs> and annoying <laughs> and um, you know his face is getting hit then by all the precipitation and those poor people in the front rows are getting cold air blasted at them every now and then so it's really not a good idea so Mary Anderson returns to Alabama and she comes up with um, a windshield wiper blade and she patents this and gets the patent for it on November 10th, uh, 1903. So this is the first automatic car window cleaning device that you control from inside the, the, the cab um, instead of what this poor guy was doing and just wiping it off. So. Um, <laughs> It's a set of wiper arms. They're made of wood. They had the rubber blade, like we're used to today, sort of. And um, it attached to a lever inside the cab. So the driver, you know, just pulled on this lever. It would drag a spring-loaded arm across the window. And there you go. And That's so neat. Neato. You could remove them when they weren't needed. So <clears throat> I think her thought was remove them in the wintertime. Like, True. I it's mean, also yeah. kind of funny because it is rain. It does rain in the summer, but of whatever. Course. Um, we have something similar to it. Um, this is metal. It's a little later, uh, but it's the same idea. It's got this uh, uh, rubber blade here, and uh, it is operated inside the cab by this knob that you move back and forth. Um, we do have a couple of cars with ones like this. Now... <clears throat> Mary Anderson's actual invention though, well, she kind of got mocked a lot for this idea. People thought it was ridiculous. They thought it would distract the driver, which is funny to me because, <laughs> you know, like now we talk about cell phones distracting. They're worried about being distracted by a wiper blade. But he's reaching, in 1903. you know, onto the window <laughs> to wipe it. How distracting I know. is that? How is that any better? That's bizarre. I have no yeah. idea. Um, but, and she did try to get companies to, to manufacture her patent, uh, but it was never put into production. So as far as I know, there really isn't actually a sample of one of these wiper blades. Um, she got rejection letters from all these companies. There was one in, in uh, Montreal specifically that wrote back to her. It said, in reply, we regret to state that we do not consider it to be of such commercial value as would warrant our undertaking its sale. You know, this company's going to go pound sand. This is not worth anything. <laughs> um, and she made no money on this. Um, but because it's only fair, let's mock some of the ways that people were using yes, to keep their windshields clean, which are ridiculous. Um, 
Dykes Manual. Um, now, Dykes Manuals came, were, um, we have some in our library here. They cover all types of cars. It's not specific to any sort of car. We use them a lot, actually, when we try to get stuff running. Uh, but a 1923 Dykes Manual. Okay, 23. This yeah. is 20 years after she did this said to mix a solution of two ounces of glycerin, an ounce of water, and a dram of salt. And you mix that up, take a cheesecloth, apply it to your windshield, and that will repel the water. It's like Rain-X for 1923, oh essentially. Um, there were also people that said, well, there was another way to cut a potato in half and smear the t potato over your windshield. Cut an onion in half or a carrot, same principles. You know, take God, those halves. Making a salad. I know, you're like making a hearty <laughs> stew and instead I'm throwing it on my windshield. And, um, wow. Side note, we, the museum has another TV show, which I'm on along with um, Dan Olson, and we actually tried these methods one <gasps> time. We did, we mixed up the solution and we tried the, the carrot and everything, and we let it sit for an hour because we still kind of let it like set. And then we took a spray bottle of water to it, and they are all terrible. Okay. <laughs> See, she was on to something. She was okay. on to something. Wow. So <clears throat> that's Mary Anderson, and we don't know much about her other than that. And um, I know we're only supposed to talk about one woman. However, I have to note that um, there was another woman in the same vein here. Her name was Charlotte Bridgewood. She takes Mary Anderson's design, and she comes up with an electrically operated wiper. Um, now, she's British. Although she lives in New Jersey when she files for this patent. <clears throat> she was actually a vaudeville performer, which is awesome. interesting. Yeah. Um, but Anderson, call, or, I'm sorry, Bridgewood called hers the electric storm windshield cleaner. And she got that patent in 1917. Instead of blades, it has rollers. You'll see the patent drawing up there. You can see like a cross section there of the rollers. But, in, you know, the rollers go across your windshield. Um, but unfortunately, much like Anderson's story, Bridgewood's patent ran out before people saw the benefit of it, mm -hmm. and she also made no money on these, these items. So there's a woman inventor, okay, two. Yeah. Um, that unfortunately didn't profit before people saw the, the practicality of what they were trying to do. I mean, how needed are those I devices? Know. Oh, come on. And here we are. It's, which <clears throat> is neat in a way. It's like we're speaking about you 100 years later. Yeah. You are getting the recognition. Remember you. <laughs> yes. Uh, that they deserve because that's just crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Um, and it's funny that you said about, um, what was her first name? Bridgewood? Uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. That's right. That's interesting you named Charlotte Bridgewood because my automobile uh, pioneer just happens to be her daughter. Um, huh? Florence Lawrence, which I love that I name. Love that I name. will never forget it. <laughs> um, and I'll never forget Florence because she's so cool. So uh, Florence huh. Lawrence was born Florence Annie Bridgewood. Um, she was born in either 86 or 1890. We're not exactly sure, which happens a lot at this time. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> she was born to, of course, Charlotte Lotta Bridgewood. Ooh. Lotta Bridgewood, okay. And she was, as Kendra said, a vaudeville actress. And then also George Bridgewood, and her dad was a carriage builder. Oh, so interesting. That's cool, and I think that probably started her interest in uh, sure. carriages and automobiles at that time. So she was interested in, like I said, carriages, also acting, because her mother was an actor, of course. So um, she started her picture, a motion picture debut in 1906. And um, she went by many, many names. She went by uh, The Girl with a Thousand Faces. The Biograph Girl, and the first movie star. Ooh. Ooh, I know. Yeah. Of course, that's been debunked over time, but I'm just going to keep calling her that because well, I just like her. So who cares? Like <laughs> um, so she, um, a, she was very famous. A lot of people didn't know her real name uh, because the Biograph company that she worked for would not put her real name in the credits. Wow. Okay, 1906 here. That's yeah. what's happening. Wow. Okay, she wasn't getting the credit, although she was a main she was a main actress in these films, which is just wow. crazy, sad, but also interesting. Um, so eventually, she became wealthy enough, despite no one knowing her name, uh, to purchase her own automobile. So this is crazy at the time because she used her own money. Wow. And bought her own automobile that, that is, she owned. That is something. So that's that like, props something. to her right there yeah. for that. Um, so with that, she really started um, tinkering um, with vehicles after she, she bought the vehicle around 1910 or so, 
and um, I think we have a photo that we're gonna flash up of her in her um, I think it's pronounced a Lozier mm -hmm. touring car. It's a 1912 uh, uh, Lozier or 1910 Lozier. It has a 1912 Pennsylvania plate on it. Oh, cool. Which is cool. So, of course, Kendra and I are like, oh, where was she in oh, Pennsylvania? <laughs> um, but that's so neat. Oh, my papers are falling here. But so she um, tinkered with this vehicle for quite some time and she was interested in ways to make it safer um, and more practical. And so she came up with uh, a device that she called um, her, her uh, mechanical signaling arm. Oh. It's really neat. Okay. Um, and uh, we don't really have, I couldn't find a photo on this thing. Um, I think because she didn't patent it, um, mm. it it's hard to find. Yeah. But I do have a patent <clears throat> uh, that I'm going to put up on the screen there that will show you guys one that's very similar to it. But basically what it was was, okay, you're si the driver would um, hit a button and when they push this button a lever a little flag raised and lowered um was raised and lowered in the back on the rear bumper of the vehicle and uh that would state which way they were turning so she okay. hit the button on the right side you're turning right on the left side you're turning left uh and that was how people would know that she was turning Turn signals. Turn signals. Oh my God, Hello. something so basic. I, and yeah. if you've ever watched, I know they're all over the internet, those videos from early 1900s uh, of people yeah. driving in the horses, it's just crazy. Without turn signals. So these it's were crazy. needed. So she invented mm. that. Um, she also developed um, a very simplistic mechanism to alert fellow motorists of when they would be stopping. So um, when the driver would push on the brake, okay, a small sign uh, that said stop, of course, would pop up on the back rear bumper of the vehicle to let other people know that they're stopping. Kendra had something to show, and so do I here at Show and Tell today. Um, this is something similar. Now, this one was patented in 1914, and this is similar to that. So you can see here how when, and this was connected to the inside of the vehicle, of course, when she would push that button, this light would light up and stop would come up here. And again, that would let everyone else know that, that they're about to make a stop. So people aren't re rear ended all over the road. I love it. It's it, very interesting. So these might seem simplistic or just kind of silly, but at the time they were really needed. And really in the future, I mean, obviously these are imperative to drive. Yeah, trying to bring some calm to all the chaos on the road. Absolutely. Yeah. So she was really ahead of her time, um, like Mary Anderson and her mother, Charlotte. Um, she unfortunately, oh, I have to tell you this <clears throat> quote. I just remembered. So she loved her vehicles so much. She called them almost human. <laughs> okay. And she said that they reacted to kindness, understanding, and care, just like people do. Okay. And I know our detailers out there will tell you. Will tell you that the vehicles do respond to care <laughs> and um, love and support. Yeah. Don't we all? Okay. So she was just a very caring, loving person who really loved her vehicles. Um, unfortunately, she died uh, in December of 38, 1938. She did oh, commit wow. suicide, unfortunately. Um, she had a very rare bone disease that wasn't discovered until many years later, so she was in constant pain, uh, which is really unfortunate. But the following year, Buick started putting turn signals, made them mandatory on all of yeah, on all of their vehicles. So again, one year behind, yeah. and she would have seen her invention, um, not wasn't patented, but it was hers, yeah. come to life. Wow, which is unfortunate. But um, again, we're trying to bring awareness yeah. about these women to to all of huh. you. This is, um, you know, the 100th anniversary of women getting the right to vote. So um, we're celebrating women today. Pretty it's cool. cool. And I remember when we talked about doing this topic and we we're like, how do we do this? Because, you know, we had a lot of different people in mind, I think. And I, we ended up going, all right, well, let's each just choose one and we'll talk about it. And then when we were talking about who we chose and digging it more, it was like, oh, my gosh, my person's, your person's mom. Like, it was just <laughs> funny. And. It's awesome. It's hilarious. So it worked out well. <laughs> it really worked out well. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it is. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot more we could have talked about, and we have a list. So maybe we'll do this again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Take another two. Um, and there's a lot to, to research on your own with this whole topic, too. 
um, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you guys should um, just Google females in automotive uh, in the automotive industry. You'll come up with a huge list of people. Dive into that because these women <clears throat> really need to be known, and they're true pioneers of really women's liberation. Quite frankly, because they were liberated in in being able to even drive and work on her own car. By the yeah. way, she worked on her own vehicle. That's pretty impressive. I mean, I don't even know how to change yeah. my tire. It's 2020. <laughs> Hello. So thank you guys for tuning in this month. Next month in November. Uh, we're going to come back and talk about the history of license plates. Yeah. So lots of history there. Wow, lots of information. We're excited about that. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Yeah, and come visit us because we got these two yeah. items out of a case in the gallery, which is full of other kind of weird directional and anti-theft and Weird automotive accessories like this. So come check us out and look at the whole case. Yep. Now we got to put them back in, though. Yeah, we have to put them back in. We'll put them back in before you guys come. We'll try. <laughs> Monday through Saturday, we're open. Um, we'd love to see you guys. And thanks again for tuning in. We really appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.